say policymakers will need to look beyond gamers in the complex issue of gun violence prevention. Liz McLaughlin, NBC News. They said no correlation, right? right? There's no evidence of such. I mean, Teenagers and preteens say they play them. We About a third admit at least one of their favorite favorites is rated mature or yeah. adults yeah. only, yeah. often yeah. because yeah. of the violent yeah. content. Yeah. Well, a new study it's finds a link between yeah. violent yeah. games yeah. and aggressive yeah. behavior yeah. in children. Dr. Harold Koplowitz is a child the Supreme psychiatrist Court has struck down and president of the law Child that Mind Institute and joins us at the table. Hello, video Harold games Koplowitz. To children. Good morning. This was Seems a like balancing act between the right of free speech and consumer protection. Study is it the state's place to dictate it's a, it's who buys what? Study in the respect Mom, it's a large dad, sample. There are over 3,000 kids. Yeah. Yeah. We got Chet Cleveland here this morning, defense over attorney. Two years, uh, the ruling was 7 to 2. And how often they play games, what kind of games they're playing. You know, I had to read it twice. I looked at it first. It has one limitation. The most of this rest of this note is that they are and are relying on Sometimes I think when I read the news like this, they're looking for ways to reduce the violence. We're not getting information from teachers, perhaps, or from parents. And the president recently expressed shock at what young people are The silliness of this is great. So what they've done is they have a great way that you have a more aggressive adult right over the not necessarily a lynch of violence, but that does tell us. And they don't, as a parent. I can say exposure to the young people. They're not able to do that. Well, I don't know about you, but... Okay. Okay. Donkey, I've got all good aids. <laughs> you heard the title. You know the deal. The age-old question posed by mothers of the internet and peddled by the click-hungry websites across the world. Video games are becoming an older and older medium for people to enjoy themselves during their downtime away from capitalism. The first game released was Pong, and it was originally derived and created by a physicist named William Higginbotham. I'm definitely saying that wrong. It was derived in 1958, which means Grandma Square was battling on the world stage almost a century before you were playing Fortnite. After this happened, a steady stream of games occurred until Atari released E.T. and it almost killed the medium off. However, you're not an idiot. I see you playing the funny block game on your phone right now. The games market is still alive and well. And in 2020, it grossed over 7 billion UK pounds, which comes in at over 9 billion freedom coins and over 13 billion kangaroo books. And just for the rule of three, that's also 42 billion Libyan dineros, which is a lot. So it's safe to say it's a successful industry. However, when something's successful, the demons come. Mothers, aunts, fathers, even my wife believed that video games cause violence and started blasting it everywhere, even to the BBC. I told them I'm not paying a fucking license. So today, I, Shadow Square, have decided to prove once and for all, using my big brain and large muscles, whether video games do indeed cause violence. What will we find? What will our answers be? Well... You're gonna have to stick around to find out. Gaming. You must be asking yourselves, Shadow Square, you handsome legend, how on God's green earth did this linker care? Well, dear viewer, I'll tell you. The earliest controversy I can find came in 1976 with the game called Death Race. Whilst looking slightly more advanced than a version of Pong, the game came under very heavy fire due to the premise. The aim of the game was to run over some alien-like creatures which gave you points and the higher the points, the higher the score. In July 1976, a reporter for the Associated Press, Wendy Walker, reached out to the game company Exidy with concerns about the game's violence. She then wrote a widely disseminated article which pointed out the game's content unfavourably. This of course led to massive public outcry and even a big boy newspaper, the New York Times, reported on the game. Whilst some cabinets were pulled from the market, the publishing company did report a large jump in sales from the negative publicity. So I suppose you win some, you lose some folks. Just a trigger warning before we move on. The next game discusses themes 
of non-sexually consensual acts. So please skip ahead if you really are comfortable with that. The next game discussed is actually historically irrelevant, so I'm gonna need to summon someone more powerful to deal with this. Costa's Revenge. Following this vibe check in 1983, a game called Costa's Revenge came along and had the objective of. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas Revenge came along and I had the objective of, no joke, of raping a Native American woman. What? The fuck? Were they thinking? Okay. So, the game's premise, if you can call it that, is to run from enemy arrows, aka, but, aka the Native American people, arrows, uh, so you can rape one of the women? Yeah, cool, alright. To add to this, the titular General Custer is absolutely bollock naked. Because, because why not? Because, fuck it. Everyone's saying E.T. nearly killed the game, the game's industry off. And General Custer can't keep it in his fucking pants. I mean... Really? What did E.T. actually do wrong? He just wants to fucking go home, you know what I mean? My man. My man, extraterrestrial. I call him by his full name because we're cool. Damn. Um... Yeah? What the fuck, Custer? What were you thinking? And you fucking- you wonder why a protest occurred after the first viewing? Are you fucking- uh... Anyway, the US Congress- Yes, the US had a fucking Congress about this. Onwards into 1993, the US Congress had a hearing on how video games cause violence. <coughs> Which is a- Oh, the shite! <laughs> this hearing gathered spokespeople from Nintendo, Sega, and many more to basically call... What? Basically call the naughty and tell them to stop being so violent. So, me, playing small, small fun little game, Animal Crossing, building house, repaying debt, that made me violent. I mean, to be fair, Tom Nook, them prices make me violent. But... Like, bruh, the US Congress didn't enjoy the fact that some games were becoming more generated towards older market because we can't have fully consenting adults seeing violence because because that would be sickening, that would be twisted, that would be fucked up. And I don't think, I don't think that's very good now, is it? They also commented on the fact that parents shouldn't be buying these ultra-violent games for their children. Mortal Kombat, being ever so petty, added a friendship to their release in Mortal Kombat 2, where the player would use button combination, similar to those for fatalities, and the winning player would give the loser a present. Like, like, a game where you beat the living shit out of people. You like rip their fucking spine from their very core. You rip their very fucking essence out their body, and it's like, not nah, present. I have present instead. It's alright. Fine, I'll just beat the shit out of you, but Merry Christmas. Yeah? This is. Yeah, fucking. Absolutely pog gaming. Like, what the fuck? And! And! On a side note, can I just say, Andrew Wakefield, you slimy little git. YouTube Terms of Services will not allow me to speak the next sentence. This isn't on the script, by the way. Half of this wasn't on the script. But, like, your ass. Your ass is mine, bitch. Anyway, hope you all have a nice day. Uh, and 
Thank you, Shadow, for giving me this opportunity. <gasps> Bye! I don't know how we're going to explain this to Susan. Shit. You can't say that about Andrew Wakefield, man. Fuck it, it's staying in. I don't know what we just witnessed, but oh my god, it was amazing. Big thank you to Anon for doing that. Wow. I'm in awe. Moving on. I am now contracted to oblige you to go subscribe to Anon. He's holding my children hostage, and I miss them very much. Next up on my list is an instant from 2003. Now, trigger warning here, this contains information about shooting, so skip ahead if you feel uncomfortable. In 2003, stepbrothers William Buckner, age 19, and Joshua Buckner, age 14, shot Aaron Hamnell, age 45, a registered nurse, and Kimberly Beatty, age 19. Aaron was killed by the shot and Kimberly was seriously injured. During the police interviews, the two boys had told police they'd got the rifles from a locked room in their home and decided to randomly shoot at tractor trailer rigs, just like in the game Grand Theft Auto 3. The pair were sentenced to an indefinite stay in state custody after being charged and sentenced for reckless homicide, endangerment and assault. The families of the two victims attempted to sue the company Rockstar and its parent company, Take-Two Interactive, along with the major games company Sony Computer Entertainment America and the distributor Walmart. They attempted to sue for $46 million in compensatory damages and $200 million in punitive damages. Punitive damages are extra compensatory damages, the aim of which is to punish the defendant for his or her wrongful conduct. They lost the lawsuit, and Miami lawyer Jack Thompson and a local lawyer named Richard Taylor alleged that the games inspired and trained players to shoot at vehicles and people. Moving on to later in the same year, Rockstar again got into hot water. In the game Vice City, there is a particular line which says, Pressured by minority groups across the US, along with the then New York City Mayor, Michael Bloomberg, the line was censored, and then in the re-release this year, it was censored again. Ringo Kayard of the Haitian American Foundation believed that it was too little too late, and Delray Beach City Commissioner John Leveson apparently forwarded the information to friends of his who worked for the state attorney at the time. In Levison's words, It sounds like it's got to be against the law. To tell people to kill a particular group of people, that has to violate the law. The state attorney didn't end up taking any further action as it fell outside of his jurisdiction. So Rockstar really has a habit of putting their $1 billion foot in it. Whilst these are just a few cherry-picked examples to show you how this theory came to pass, there is so much more we could delve into. The National Coalition Against Censorship has a brilliant resource on the timeline of the most baffling and heinous events in the life of video games, so if this topic interests you, feel free to check it out. After doing some research into the basic controversies, I wanted to find some form of science. So I did! I found a lovely 23-page research piece called The Effects of Violent Video Games on Aggression, a meta-analysis. This rather ravishing piece of science is created by John L. Shelley, who I have reached out to for comment, however, that cunt was too busy to answer me. Hi John! The paper supposes many things and contains a lot of good science. Look at this good science right here, that equation is just to die for. However, to save you from all the scientific mumbo jumbo, let's look at the abstract. Violent content video games such as Mortal Kombat and Doom have become very popular among children and adolescents, causing great concern for parents, teachers, and policy makers. This study accumulates findings across existing empirical research on the effects of violent video games to estimate overall effect size and discern important trends and moderating variables. Results suggest there is a smaller effect of violent video games on aggression than has been found with television violence on aggression. 
this effect is positively associated with type of game violence and negatively related to time spent playing the games. I know. It's a lot of words, so we'll break it down. The opening statement basically just outlines the concept, telling us that violent video games are worrying people because children are playing them. It's simple enough. Moving on, the next sentence being much more analytical and wordy states that the research draws on previously published research in attempt to prove or disprove whether the research correlates with collective data. The next sentence sums up the findings, telling us that the effects of the video games on violence are a lot less problematic in comparison with television shows and violence. The final sentence sums up the findings and it tells us that there is a positive association with the type of game and a negative association with the time played. Now, this is all well and good, but we need to be fair. So I went searching and I found an opposing paper because science must be fair unless your name is Andrew Wakefield. Don't worry, that video is coming soon. The paper is called Violent Video Games and Aggression, Causal Relationship or Byproduct of Family Violence and Intrinsic Violent Motivations. This paper is penned by a total of six different authors, so the comparison between the two is quite easy to make. Six authors are better than one. This is because of basic scientific integrity, as you can place more trust in something that has been read over and checked by six different people, more than you can from a paper penned by one. So let us read the abstract of the paper and derive all of the juicy knowledge. Two studies examined the relationship between exposure to violent video games and aggression or violence in the laboratory and in real life. Study 1 participants were either randomized or allowed to choose to play a violent or non-violent game. Although males were more aggressive than females, neither randomized exposure to violent video game conditions nor previous real-life exposure to violent video games caused any differences in aggression. Study 2 examined correlations between trade aggression, violent criminal acts, and exposure to both violent games and family violence. Results indicated that trade aggression, family violence, and male gender were predictive of violent crime, but exposure to violent games was not. Structural equation modeling suggested that family violence and innate aggression as predictors of violent crime were a better fit to the data than was exposure to video game violence. These results questioned the common belief that violent video game exposure causes violent acts. Again, let's break this down. Their sentence tells us that the research they performed was to prove or disprove the link. They then explain what occurred in the first and second study in a detailed but understandable way. They then showed us the conclusion of the research. Structural equation modelling suggests that family violence and innate aggression as predictors to violent crime were a better fit to the data than was the exposure to video game violence. This single-handedly shows us that this research piece disproves the link with a final rather sarcastic line to boot. These results question the common belief that violent video game exposure can cause violent acts. So now, we have two opposing ideas. This is exactly what we need moving forward. On one hand, we have a paper stating that there is a link, and on the other hand, there isn't! I wonder what we do now. Maybe we make them fight. No, I can't do that, I'll get sued again. Well, I believe the answer is actually quite simple. Research this shit for ourselves and see what the world thinks. Let's go, baby! Woo! What do you mean I'm all out on the side? There's another pandemic? Since when? We now have our points of view, and a basic understanding so we can move on to collecting our own data. This, of course, in true Shadow Square nature, will be a survey. Online because we're not allowed outside, because of a pandemic. The survey has a few happy questions. Do you play video games? What's your favourite game? Do you know of any violence that has occurred because of video games? Do you believe video games cause violence? And is Andrew Wakefield a lying con man? The last question of this being very, very important to the research, I assure you. The reasoning behind the pool of questions, however, is to gain an understanding on how far this theory has spread, along with whether those who don't play video games hold this opinion more than those who do. I myself am a gamer, I can be very violent, but only around Monopoly. As usual we kept the survey open for a set amount of time, 96 hours or 4 days, and after this we have a total of 34 responses. 
After this, myself and the ever-wisdomful Dogs Dogs sat down and worked through the results. We created charts and tables to helpfully dissect this information, and then we took them to our scientists, and on and bean. They help us verify the results to be good enough to leave the Shadow Square lab. They agreed, and now we get to do the fun bit. Now time to look at our data. When looking at data, we need to be unbiased and taking all the opinions and answers into account. Unless the answer contains Fortnite, then you can piss off! The polls are in. Stop trying to vote. We're not a conservative household which votes with the postal. We have our first question. Do you play video games? Now, here's our freshly baked results. As you can see here, we have a tally of 88.2% yes and 11.8% no. Now, this is very predictable and it tells us that most people do indeed play video games. I don't know what else you expected. The second question asked, what was the respondent's favourite game? And we got some beautiful answers. Stardew Valley came out, an absolute beautiful game created by one guy. I learned that today. One person told me it was Paradox Grand Strategy Game, so we all know he slash she gets a lot of pussy. Grand Theft Auto came up with a surprising amount of times I heard they brought back Franklin. Very good. This man said The Witcher 3. Henry Cavill's in the Netflix show, great. Someone said Fortnite. Disgusting. My editor and small lady, which she heavily disputes, Dogs Dog, said her favourite game was Pokemon Diamond because of enslaved friends, which is fun and, and slightly dark. So that that was fun. <laughs> Moving on. Third. Our third question asks our respondent, do you know of any violence which have occurred because of video games? Now, looking at the chart, we can see there is an overwhelmingly no response of 91.2%, with a yes response only having an 8.8%. This is a clear indication within this small group at least, violence related to video games is incredibly low. As for the yes category, I asked them to tell me what violence occurred due to these video games. One person commented, say, losing matches. I know people who have punched walls or broken keyboards. Now, whilst I wouldn't call that a violent act worth reporting on, it is however noteworthy. Another comment said, death slamming and wall punching, which again, more of the same. Our final comment said, I heard several cases of school shootings, where the killer had stated they wanted to recreate violent game scenes. Now, this is rather interesting, we'll come back to it. Now our fourth question, the big one, do you believe video games cause violence? Now to begin with, we'll start with the note column. The note column came in at 79.4%. Referring back to the first question, this is lower than the amount of people who had said yes to playing video games, which means some of our sample who do play video games could also believe video games cause violence. Moving on to the maybe column, it came in at 17.6%, meaning some people who answered are definitely on the fence on whether they do or don't cause violence, which is a rather interesting result because it's a lot higher than I believed it would be and it is an indicator that maybe the link between video games and violence is higher in people's minds than I originally believed. Finally, with the yes column, it showed us that 2.9% of people said yes, which is honestly not particularly surprising when you cross-reference with question 1. Now on to our final question. Is Andrew Wakefield a lying con man? Now, as you can see here, everyone thinks he's a lying con man. Now Andy, that is how you fix a fucking research piece. I didn't have to fucking lie about a child's illness and I certainly didn't have to get paid by a lawyer to perform the research, nor did I have to cite a fucking nut job like Hugh Fundenberg to get my paper across the line. You put innocent children at risk and potentially killed hundreds of kids because you wanted to get paid. You are a lying, fraudulent scumbag and I hope the US deports you soon so you can come back here and live with the shame and hopefully, just hopefully, you will feel the pain and loss of those who lost their lives because of your reckless, selfish and absolute scummy actions. Lord knows when I get around to making a video on you, I will rip your cock off! Two comments presented at the end piques my interest. The first one read, I don't think video games cause violence, but I definitely think they can inspire violence. Playing violent video games as a child did not change me in any way. But someone who has an inclination of violence may become too engrossed by being able to act out things in the games that motivate them to act more violently in real life. I don't think there is much to be done about this considering the main solution would be censoring or restricting video games. And then where does it stop? Films, news, books. 
It's not very possible to cater around some deranged people. The second comment read, I've heard several cases of school shootings where the killer has stated they wanted to recreate video game scenes. The first comment stuck out to me as rather thought-provoking because the comment raised is a good point. If we do begin censorship of video games, violent video games, to contest deranged people, once a small bit of ground is given, how much more would be conceded due to unforeseen consequences? On the other hand, we can't show everything, certain things should be censored. It's a fine tightrope, but the discussion probably is best safe for another time. The second comment relates to comments made about school shootings. After a small bit of research, I found an article from NBC News describing the comments in greater detail, which led me down a rabbit hole to show me the missing puzzle piece about why this rumour is so mainstream. Get ready for the rage. Now, this is the part of the video which contains a rather large amount of rage, which I will save for the end. So this article, written for the NBC, sensationalises the Red Lake, Minnesota shooting perpetrator, discussing with a doctor named Catherine Newman about how the shooter was reenacting scenes from his video games. She says this, I think if you look at many of the most popular figures that exemplify male identity in our society, you'll see a Rambo, you'll see a Matrix, you'll see many examples of the lone gunman, who achieves a degree of masculine superiority over others through shooting. And so what I've argued in my book is that this is not a question of media inspiring violent rage in a kid so much as media providing a script, if you like, a popularly recognisable sequence that displays the male in this admirable violent role. This is absolute shite. I am sorry, but I'm a diehard fan of the Matrix movies, and I would barter to say that in all of the movies, Trinity, whilst not being the saviour of humanity or fucking GOD, was way more badass than Neo ever was, although Keanu is incredibly sexy. On top of this, Rambo was a cult classic for the longest time, as was The Matrix. This perceived notion of the lone gunman representing the male identity is so far from the truth it heads. The male identity is anything from a builder to a cleaner to a CEO to a father, anything. These notions are so outdated, even for 2005, it's ridiculous. Another article entitled Michigan School Shooting Alleged Shooter Ethan Crumbly, 15, said bloodthirsty drawings were for his video games. The 15-year-old accused for murdering four students told the school counsellors his chilling drawings of bloodshed were designed for video games. Without even needing to read the rest of the article, the headline is so needlessly sensationalist. It's written in a way to draw in clicks and peddle a link between video games and violence just that little bit more. When it's been disproven! Using phrases such as bloodthirsty and chilling without a doubt places a negative, almost satanic view of video games in your mind whilst those terms are best saved for the crime, the crime alone and those who do it. And that is right. The actual theory has been scientifically disproven. The American Psychology Association has stated there is insufficient scientific evidence to support a casual link between violent video games and violent behaviour. And yet headline after headline after headline blows this fear-mongering rumour about just to spread its own agenda that all of these attacks and all of these crimes and violent acts are all linked back to a medium that is grown into one of the biggest entertainment industries in the world, highly outclassing the now archaic fucking dinosaurs of the past, desperately attempting to pin the blame upon video games. Because sometimes there isn't a fucking reason why people do this. Sometimes there isn't a clear motive, because some people aren't normal, some people are deranged, some people do horrible acts. It's okay because the media can just create clicks, create views. That's fine. There's no problem with that. There's no problem with vilifying people on the news night after night. There's no problem with giving these people who have committed such heinous acts all of the publicity they could ever want. Just so you get a bit of extra cash. So you can pop a few more adverts on your site or play a few more adverts or have a bit more screen time. It is ridiculous. There's a whole other thing to talk about the media, and it is best safe for another time, because this isn't about them. This is about video games. So now I've written, said and done, what now? 
Well, to begin with, if you know anyone who is personally spreading the theory about, I want you to pick them up and break their knees, and then I want you to tell them they're wrong. If you happen to see any articles of fear-mongering, don't open them, don't give these bastards the clicks they so desperately want, and maybe do something else. Hey, Facebook's good this time of year. Hold on. What? Yeah, I'm, I'm just talking about Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, just finishing the script. Just doing the, doing the lines. It's going well. Almost done. I'm just on the bit where I'm telling people to maybe go use Facebook and like farm build this good back in the day. What? Maybe don't go on Facebook. Maybe just play some of my personal favourite games instead. Payday 2. You rob banks. Minecraft. Build a house. City states make a communist dystopia. Far Cry 3. Pyro cynical video. What's that doing here? So that's that. I'm going for a lie down now because my brain hurts. Make sure you go and sub to Anna on Twitch for lending his voice and his mind to this project. A big thank you as always to Dogs Dogs for keeping me sane during the development process of this video with aid on data collection scripts and, you know, keeping me from making too many wife jokes. I think we've only had one. That's a whole time new record. Also, thank you to Bean for helping me out, making sure all the data is good. You're a clever bastard and I love you. Next time, we're going to probably look at something else or I might just release the same video forever. This actually sounds like a lot less work. Thanks for watching! Maybe subscribe and I'll see you all on the flip side, my... What do I call you? Home dogs? Nah, no, snuff, fuck that.